trouble was that Einstein also showed that you couldn't build a rocket ship that would travel faster than the speed of light. If by some magic you could travel faster than light, then that could take you back in time. But travel faster than light was strictly proscribed. There was no way you could do it. This was Einstein's golden rule. But it seemed to make time travel to the past utterly impossible. Some people, however, refused to accept the golden rule. They would devise outrageous schemes to get round it. And they would find a way. But first, though, they'd have to sacrifice something important. Something called common sense. In our everyday lives, we tend to think common sense is useful. Physicists, though, have long been more skeptical. The universe, it just so happens, is much too upmarket and exotic for our common sense. The universe consists of stars, supernovas, or the freezing cold of outer space. That's the universe of Einstein, with time speeding up and time slowing down. We are the oddballs. We are the exception. Check it out, check it out, check it out. Shoot the freaking, freaking head. Fifteen shots, five dollars, thirty-five shots a second. Anybody can play this game. That's why our intuition, our common sense, fails us when we want to understand the universe. People complain that we physicists keep coming up with weirder and weirder concepts. The reason is we are actually getting closer and closer to the truth. So if we physicists keep coming up with crazier and crazier ideas, that's because that's the way the universe really is. The universe is crazier than any of us really expected. The question then is whether the universe is crazy enough to allow us to travel through time at will, to break Einstein's golden rule and travel to the past. Some people think it is. It's long been claimed that if people could travel through time at will, then we'd be surrounded by tourists from the future. How do we know we aren't? In the United States, there are a number of people who claim to have traveled in time. And they do it quite happily in both directions. How many time travels? I think there are probably thousands. I think it's quite possible that there are thousands of people that are doing this. Patricia Ress has written a number of books about real-life time travelers. Twelve and a half foot ceiling. There's two types of technology that go into time travel. One is the nuts and bolts where you would get into a machine and dial and say you want to go to a certain year and a certain place and the machine would take you and it would work something like Star Trek where you would disassemble and then be reassembled at a different location. Uh, the other type of time travel that's possible to use your mind to go through uh, time portals. And his father's dream. I've never time traveled because I might wander into a situation that I wouldn't have the knowledge to deal with. For example, if I ran into a dinosaur, I don't know how I would kill it or capture it. And, and if I went ahead in the future and had a robot after me, I don't know what I would do about that. New Orleans seems somehow appropriate for Patricia's research. A city which feels like it might be on the edge of one of her time portals. She's here to meet a voyager in time. Called Aggie, he claims to have his very own time machine. In the beginning when I was working with this machine, I couldn't get anything to happen. But after I started manipulating my brainwave pattern at the same time, I started getting flashes of light coming from the side into my field of vision. And I found myself walking down the street. And I walked up to a newspaper stand. And I picked up a newspaper. 
And I was able to read that newspaper, and that newspaper was six months into the future. Some of the things that I saw in the future is very hard to believe. This country is in for some hard times. From about the fall of 2004, the stock market and the economy in this country is starting to take a dive. A year later, in about the fall of 2005, it gets to the point where we almost have an armed uprising. The military will have to step in and create order and install a new government. So how does his time machine work? Aggie agreed to demonstrate it. And I will plug it in now. And here is the electromagnet. And this is the time coil. And then we have the electronic box with the chip in it, the stick plate, and the dials for the fine tuning of the frequency itself. The time coil is put around your head. It goes right over here. Right above your eyebrows, around the middle of the head. Then I will bring my brainwave frequency down into the bottom of the alpha range and picture the time, the date, and the place to where I want to go. This particular machine is a mind-machine interface device. Without the mind, I doubt it will work. I can feel the machine working because the magnet is really hot and I can feel a tingling right here in my solar plexus from the direction of the brunt of the magnetic field. Is it working yet? This time, no, I've been talking too much. I don't expect anything to happen here. If Argie had traveled into the future and then back, he'd have proven it was possible to break Einstein's golden rule. The one that said travel back in time was impossible. His failure, though, doesn't mean that the rule is safe. There are other people who say they can get round it. Serious scientists. But their ideas make those of Agi seem positively mundane. The man who found a way round Einstein's golden rule was a friend of his. He also happened to be one of the most eccentric figures in the history of science, which is saying something. Kurt Gödel spent most of his life convinced he was being followed and that there was a conspiracy to poison him. He was also one of the most brilliant mathematicians ever to have lived. 1949, a bombshell was dropped. Einstein's friend, Kurt Gödel, who was one of the most famous mathematicians of the 20th century, found a solution to Einstein's equations where time travel to the past was possible. 